Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and I am cooking. <laughs> I'm just checking in on my food. Um, today it's kind of a cheat day. I'm making, uh, as you can see down here, I'm making broccoli and beef. You know, I seasoned it up a little bit, put the broccoli in there, and then I also made corn on the cob, which I have some right here, an extra one. I already ate the other one. Uh, while I'm cooking, I like to eat sometimes, and I'm also making food for work so I can bring uh, it to work with me. And I'm also drinking water. I know a lot of people are probably surprised by that. I buy two of these now because they're like two for two dollars at Target. Uh, sometimes I buy the, the big uh, container too. But I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm easing into things like this. Like I, I don't really drink a lot of water. I'm drinking this for lunch and then I might have like one soda today. And then I just try to, I'm trying to get down to one a day. Uh, right now I'm at three. Uh, but yesterday I actually only had two. So I'm like, okay, if I can stick to two for this rest of the week, I'll be great. So if I can have one at work and then maybe one when I get home or just have two at work just to get me through the day, whatever it is, but I'm really trying here. I know it's uh, some people, it's probably a lot easier for you, uh, but you know, it, it's, it's hard for me to not have that kind of caffeine. So maybe what I'll do is drink one at work and if I can make it just with one and then have some tea when I get home with some caffeine in it to help my head. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna finish cooking here. And then we're going to look at some other Venom stuff, talk about more Venom uh, comic book stuff probably, and uh, and just, you know, keep this thing going, man. I really, again, appreciate all the support. So actually it looks like we did get some movie news out of the San Paolo comic experience, which was the Comic-Con in Brazil this past weekend. Uh, Sony did a, like a little uh, press thing there and they showed off the new Miles Morales trailer uh, into the Spider-Verse. And I'm really excited for that movie. Uh, you know, some of you asked if I would do a trailer reaction to it. I probably won't because I've already seen the trailer. I was at work and a coworker of mine, uh, Jay, was like, you got to watch this, you got to watch this. And I was like, okay, fine. So on my break, I went back and watched it. So you wouldn't get an honest reaction out of me. So I figured it's it's not worth recording at this point. Uh, but I thought it was awesome. It looked great. And at the end of this the press conference, or not press conference, but panel, I guess, uh, Sony had a, a video message from Ruben Fleischer, who's the director of Venom, who also directed Zombieland, you know, we'll talk more about him in a future episode. But then at the end of his little message, Tom Hardy popped out and told the audience like, hey, uh, you know, uh, it's me, it's Tom, and I'm, I'm going to do this character justice. We're doing everything we can to make this the Venom that you want to see. And I, you know, obviously, why wouldn't he say that? Or what else would he say? I mean, he's, he has to say that. But at the same time, I believe it because this guy, every role he's taken, he takes very seriously. And and I, it's neat to see someone of this caliber take Venom and the fact that they're making this Venom movie. I know a lot of people out there are still like, why are they making this? Why are they making this? It's like, I get it. I'm, I'm in, I was in that boat too. But the more I see this cast reveal and then obviously Ruben as the director, it's like, I get more excited for it. I, I get more hopeful that this could be done well um, and yes we have we could have a whole nother video talking whether it's worth doing because it can you make a Venom movie without Spider-Man I used to think you couldn't but then as I peeled back the layers and looked at all that needs to happen for Venom's story to be told you really don't need Spider-Man the only way you really need him is just the powers you know it's like oh the Venom suit gives Eddie the powers of Spider-Man in a way and is able to block out Spidey's, you know, sp uh, spider sense and stuff. Uh, but again, we'll make another video about all that and we'll have a full discussion for sure because there's a lot of things. I could play devil's advocate on both sides on that one. And then after Tom said that he was going to make, you know, the Venom, the, the character we all want to see, he mentioned that this was a big deal to the Marvel Universe, which, you know, a lot of people are confused by that comment because they're thinking maybe this confirms that it's connected to Spider-Man Homecoming and all the other ones. Um, I think maybe it just, you know, he meant Marvel Universe in general. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what his mindset was uh but hopefully that won't get you know blown too much out of proportion although i've already seen on here a ton of articles focusing on that instead of the other things that tom was saying um but i mean it's interesting we can talk about that in the comments down below or in another video of whether this is actually connected or not uh, i don't think it is i think they've said a couple times that it wasn't because the director ruben was like i i want to tell a self-contained story i want to tell something that just is intimate and just fits here in this nice little bubble and if it expands later that's great but let's get this one right first and I like that mentality a ton so I'm going to go with that for now uh, but if this is connected in a way that would be interesting to see and we'll learn about that later uh, and then but then the last thing Tom Hardy said was the thing I'm most interested in which is confirmation that this movie is based off of two Spider uh, two Spider-Man slash Venom storylines uh, because Spider-Man was in both of these uh, even though they are kind of storylines that help set up Venom as the character, Spider-Man was a part of them. So it's it's really interesting to see that they're like, hey, we're telling stories 
and, and Venom's origin and everything and, and a story with Venom without Spider-Man. And they're basing it on two stories that had Spider-Man in it. Uh, but that's okay because you could easily cut Spider-Man out of both of these stories and still have a good experience. Uh, so one of them is Lethal Protector, which we talked about before with the Life Foundation in the casting video. There was someone cast, uh, James Jones, I think, cast as a, as a LF security guard, which is a Life Foundation security guard, who are the enemies of Venom in the storyline Lethal Protector. So we will do an episode on the Lethal Protector protector comic book i'll tell you all about that storyline uh, that'll be coming up we're going to do the vengeance of venom first trade paperback and then we'll talk about lethal protector and we'll go over all of that uh, the other thing tom hardy said was it's also based on planet of the symbiotes which i did not see coming because the whole time i was looking at this movie i was thinking it's a small intimate storyline with venom and then they set him up and they it's character you know exploration and then they have some action scenes and then maybe throw a carnage in at the end and it's like an, you know one-on-one -on -one intimate battle and i was really hoping they wouldn't just throw symbiotes in there one after the other i was hoping they wouldn't put scream in there and hybrid and all those other characters and lasher but it looks like they might possibly because planet of the symbiotes is basically uh, like a rift in time and space opening up and all these symbiotes coming to Earth. Uh, but then when I really thought about it, um, it's pretty neat because that's an alien invasion movie. And I'm like, wow, I didn't think about that for a Venom story. Uh, something that maybe starts off small and intimate and then gets really big, like a lot of comic book movies and things like that do. Um, I kind of didn't want the world to be at stake in this one. I was kind of hoping it would, like I said, be a little bit more intimate than that um, and not you know, need all these symbiotes. But for all we know, it's just the threat of the planet of the symbiotes. Maybe Carnage is like, oh, I have this machine that the Life Foundation made and I can bring the rest of our people here. Uh, because if you, in the comics, if you know the uh, the lore of the symbiote, which are called uh, Clinarts or something like that, uh, basically that's in, like the name of their alien race. Um, they basically uh, are just no nonsense. They come in, they possess someone, a symbiote bonds with them and take over them and they make them, you know, bloodthirsty and kill and the the symbiote that eddie brock has is a little different it was exiled because it was different it had the capacity to change uh, for better or worse it had the capacity to not just be static like all the other ones just act a certain way and this symbiote was different and that's why they imprisoned it on the on that um that planet battle world uh in the like the, the little chamber that it was in that spider-man found it in that he thought was a, like a, a a machine that made new costumes <laughs> uh so apparently that that's the backstory and they reveal that in the planet of the symbiote storyline so i'll make a whole video on planet of the symbiotes also and how that ties in and maybe might tie in to this movie and where they might go with the storyline uh for this movie based on that uh but that you get more history of the the symbiote itself in planet of the symbiotes and uh, I'm just kind of blown away that these are the two stories. Like Lethal Protector, I kind of figured because, like I said, it felt like a small, intimate story. And it's the one most people remember when they think of Venom was that, that first six-issue miniseries with him and Spider-Man versus the Life Foundation. It starts off with Venom in the first three issues, and then Spidey comes in towards the end. Um, and then Plan of the Symbiotes. That one is just a curveball to me. I didn't see it coming. But I'm excited because, like I said, if you strip away all the, the goofiness of Planet of the Symbiotes and some of the bad storytelling in that, um, even though it's the same writer, David Michelin, who uh, wrote Venom's first appearance and also wrote Lethal Protector, um, there's still some bad storytelling in Planet of the Symbiotes. Uh, maybe it's because it happened during the Clone Saga, which we'll talk about another time, uh, or never, actually. And, uh, and Planet of the Symbiotes is... Um, when you peel back the layers, it does reveal more the origin of the suit itself. And you see that it was it was an exiled uh, being, and it doesn't feel wanted. And again, Eddie Brock didn't feel wanted. He was willing to commit suicide when the suit found him um, after being rejected. And so you could still keep that storyline of, all right, Eddie Brock feels rejected by humanity, and the symbiote feels rejected by its race, the Klinarts, and, uh, and basically these two meet. And you can, so it's based, you know, to me, again, you don't need Spider-Man to tell that part of the story. Uh, maybe you do to, you know, establish his powers and stuff, but you don't need it for that, the emotional crux of Eddie Brock. So again, I hope the movie dives into that, knowing that these are the source materials uh, of the movie's script. So we'll talk about these for sure. I'll do future episodes where we talk more about Lethal Protector, Play the Symbiotes, all that stuff. But I just wanted to bring this out since we had some news today. Um, it's Sunday. I just woke up and I was like, hey, cool. We got more movie news from the Brazil Comic Con. So this is all we have for now. I'll keep making videos. Um, if I ever run low on news from this movie, which seems to be the case because, you know, it's, it's still early in production and also they're, you know, they're, they're kind of 
not really uh, wanting to give away too, too much, basically. And, and they're, they're trying to play it close to the vest, which I appreciate and I like a lot. So because of that reason, I may not have news all the time to report to you guys. So if I don't, that's when we'll look at the comic books and we'll look at the characters and we'll do breakdown episodes of stuff like that. But uh, I appreciate you guys, you know, helping me keep this, this going. We're already in like six episodes now and I got two more already recorded. So, you know, it's going to be fun. We're going to just post one of these every couple days. And then anytime new movie news like this comes out, I'll try to make an immediate video for y'all. So as always, I appreciate uh, you watching the channel. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of Planet of the Symbiotes, what you think of Lethal Protector, what you think of, if you are at Brazil Comic Con, let me know, all that stuff. Put it all down in the comments and we'll have a conversation about it. Thanks so much for watching my channel. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.